morning, everyone, and welcome back to our study of Paul's letter to the Romans. I got cut off last time, and I'm sorry about that, so I'm continuing where I left off last time. And if you would please read again Romans chapter 4, verses 16 to 21, Romans 4, 16 to 21, and now I'm going to move into the questions. Question one, if the promise depends on adherence to the law, whose power does it depend on, and what happens to grace? So if uh, the promise is only kept by way of our perfect obedience to the law, uh, then uh, the power uh, of the promise depends entirely on us. And uh, <laughs> that doesn't make much sense because the promise comes from God. Um, so if the promise comes from God, uh, then it is up to God to keep the promise. And the way God keeps the promise uh, is by way of God's faithfulness uh, and by way of his grace. Uh, we are not perfectly obedient to the law, and yet God is going to keep God's promises uh, to us and to uh, the world. Question two, verse 17 alludes both to Jesus and to God's promise uh, to Abraham. How? I'm going to have to look back because I don't have it right in front of me. It alludes to Jesus because there's a reference to life uh, from the dead, and uh, it also refers to Abraham because there's something alluding to uh, creation, um, bringing things out of nothing, bringing things into existence, and that's a, an allusion to Abraham and Sarah because they were old had not yet had children, and yet God would keep his promise uh, to, to give them uh, the blessing of children, bring into existence that which did not uh, exist. Uh, question three, we're talking about Abraham's faith here. So what did Abraham believe in, and did he um, have any knowledge of Jesus? Well, there's no indication that he had any uh, knowledge of Jesus. He might have had a, a mystical understanding or a mystical communion with Jesus, as he had a mystical communion with God and believing in the Trinity. We believe uh, he would have had a, a kind of mystical sense of, of God and Jesus in and through uh, that faith. But he didn't have any head knowledge, any cognitive knowledge uh, about Jesus, so he couldn't believe particular doctrines about him. Uh, and I think that is relevant because um, it's pointing to the possibility of those from Abrahamic faiths who have a different understanding of Jesus than we do, who have been raised with a different understanding of Jesus, and those who have next to no knowledge about Jesus, potentially having faith analogous to Abraham's. Uh, and that was a faith that God would keep his promise that Abraham would be blessed with children, that those children would be blessed, that those children would be a blessing to the world. So people who have faith uh, that good things are ahead for them uh, and their children, people who have faith in goodness, uh, people who uh, live into that faith of good things ahead, just as Abraham lived into them and did do his part. So there is a, we need to act on our faith, as I said in Sunday's sermon. And so people who then act on their faith in God and goodness ahead for them and their offspring uh, have a faith that is similar to Abraham's. Uh, question four. So sharing Abraham's faith when we are as good as dead and who isn't in the long view of things. So everybody's as good as dead because uh, these bodies are perishable. We are like the grass of, of the field. Um, sharing Abraham's faith would involve what for those who know next to nothing about Jesus? I already answered that. Um, so there's nothing more uh, to say about that. And I would ask you now to read verses 22 through 25. Uh, Romans 4, verses 22 to 25. Pause the video, and now moving on to question 5. Faith being reckoned as righteousness means what? So Abraham's faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Uh, Abraham was counted as righteous. He was credited with righteousness uh, because of what he uh, believed, and that was that God would keep his promises. Question six, this is an important addition when it comes to how much our faith makes things uh, right and uh, 
uh, and the promise resting on grace, because how close do we come to the righteousness of Jesus? We are very, very far uh, from the obedience uh, to the law of love that Jesus calls us to. And therefore, uh, while justification on the one hand involves a being made righteous in this life, a sanctification, a, a growing in righteousness, um, we will never uh, achieve the level of righteousness uh, that Jesus shows the world. Uh, and so therefore, it is important that we recognize that we will be credited with righteousness by way of our faith in God and God's mercy, which points in the direction of the next question, which is falling very short of the, the standards of Jesus. We rely uh, on what again and again to be made right. Uh, we rely on uh, Jesus being handed over to death for our trespasses. We rely on the forgiveness of God uh, to feel right about ourselves, uh, to have our guilt and our shame cleansed from us, for things to be made right in our relationship. Uh, just as we have been forgiven, we must forgive those who have wronged us. And, and forgiving others who have wronged us, we clean the slate in our relationship and allow a, a new foundation of righteousness to grow. Uh, pause the video and, and read verses 1 through 5 in chapter 5. 1 through 5 in chapter 5 in the description. This is a, a wonderful conclusion. Um, there's so much suffering in our world right now, uh, and the suffering by way of uh, the cross of Jesus is not meaningless. Um, there is purpose in us, in it, and the purpose in it for us is to grow in us the character of Christ Jesus. Um, we boast in Jesus. We don't boast in ourselves to get back to that. Um, we boast in uh, who Jesus was and the grace that we have come to know uh, because of Jesus. We boast even in the sufferings, which is an amazing statement by Paul. And that's because we understand that our sufferings are not pointless, but they actually form the character of Christ Jesus in us. We come to have a greater compassion for those who are suffering in the world around us and want to act on that compassion and be a part of saving people who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Uh, and uh, this is all a part of uh, the production of the character of Jesus uh, in us. And as that character is produced and we become more and more like Jesus, our lives are filled with more and more hope, the hope of eternal life. And I've got to get myself some new glasses because these keep going funny in the midst of the video. God bless and keep you all, and thanks so much for listening, and uh, enjoy the video that's going to be at the end uh, uh, of this week's midweek worship that you're about to see for those of you watching this in worship.